Tonight, we have um, Linda Bartash Dolly. She's an author. She's written um, several books about carousels, and they're on Amazon. I found her because I, I tuned, a friend of mine was interested in carousels, has a carousel horse for sale here. And we listened to um, a presentation she did on Zoom to the Henrietta Historical Society a couple months ago, and it was very good. So I called her, and um, so she's um, she's taken that presentation and revised it. So it's about postcards in carousels. So, and, and she's here in Rochester. So welcome. Well, thank, thank you for having me. I, I did a completely new uh, presentation just for this group. So I, I uh, it makes me a little extra nervous just because it's new, but I, I'm really proud. I, I, I like this actually a little challenge to present something different. And instead of um, my last presentation, I did a presentation just on Monroe County carousels uh, in New York. So this one is all of New York carousels. Uh, so thank you all for attending. And I wanna start with, this is a postcard history of New York carousels. Um, I'm gonna start by saying I can't catch every carousel in New York because that would take way too long. But I'm gonna start by doing the carousels that I've collected postcards of. Okay, so um, we're gonna start with, um, I actually put this little picture here, which is a postcard I got of a, um, of a carousel. Um, and I wanna start a little bit about myself. Yes, I was you. introduced very nicely. And I, I grew up in the Rochester, New York area. I've researched carousel since 1994. I've published uh, five books about carousel history. And uh, most of mine are based, most of my research is based on uh, the New York area and Monroe County, which is uh, where I live in Rochester. Uh, besides collecting carousel pictures, I do have a couple kitty horses. Uh, I'm just showing my little guy because I've had him a lot. I've actually had him for, for about 20 years. So he, he goes a lot, goes along with me everywhere. <laughs> And um, um, the postcards in, that are in the slideshow are ones that I collected probably over the past 10 years. I mostly collect um, postcards of New York area um, carousels. So I was, uh, this actually gave me opportunity to show them to um, the people that might enjoy them. So I'm gonna start with uh, some of the early carousels. Uh, this one is uh, Green Lake, which is near Syracuse area. And uh, what's nice about it is it's, it's a really old one. You can see how, how primitive it is. Um, and just for those that are out of state, I've also included the county. And um, if you um, have any questions about it later, let me know. But um, New York is, is you know, a fairly big state. So there's a lot of um, little towns that may not be um, easy to remember. You know, some of, even I don't always know where each little town is, but this one was actually near Syracuse. And uh, carousels um, have a lot of, there's so much history and there's so many different carousels. Uh, the one thing about carousels um, is that they have uh, really a big history and they moved, a lot of these carousels moved around a lot. Uh, a lot of people actually just felt like when the carousels became popular, it was a way to actually make money. You go from town to town, People would scan line, they'd ride the carousel, and you, you make a decent money from it. So these, it was an opportunity for people to make a little money and get to travel. So um, I'm not sure if this uh, carousel in Weedsport, New York, uh, was one that was always there or if it was just a special event. I'm assuming it was a special event, um, but um, it, this is a postcard I was able to find. And you could see there's a, a little smoke on the right, the right side of the picture that's a steam engine. Uh, you can't really see the carousel very well, but um, I, I could see it from the steam engine. It was an early carousel and, and look at the line of people. It, it's really neat to think of um, that time when, when people would um, get dressed up just to go see a carousel and it was a big event. Now this carousel is uh, it's listed as a merry-go-round Gramsville, New York. Um, I had to look this up because I had never heard of this uh, area. It's uh, in Sullivan County, New York. And you can't really see the carousel very well, but it does look like there's a, a, lion, a lion on there and some horses. Um, I, it looks like a, some kind of carnival in, in my opinion, but um, it's it just, there's such variety in these carousels. Um, many of them traveled and, and it's, it's really hard to get a whole history of some of these carousels. Now this is, um, 
Albion Amusement Company. And what's neat about Albion Amusement Company is it traveled around a lot. It was in my area. It was even Seabreeze um, area, in, um, which is Rochester, New York. Um, they had several carousels and they traveled around. Um, this was actually a postcard. I, I did come up with some pictures too of the carousels, but uh, this is actually a postcard of the um, their train, which um, took their carousel around. And back then, um, that was one of the big ways to travel with your carousel is uh, put it on a train. I um, I like to fi find little stories because it's, sometimes it's hard thinking back to back then and what carousels were like. And um, some of the stories in the newspapers really give a little bit of um, flavor to the you know carousels. For one thing, uh, carousels weren't accepted by everybody. And sometimes people would, um, would not like these carousels. They, they protested the carousels. They didn't want to near them. This protest was uh, uh, in Buffalo. And it says um, the health commissioner, he sent a communication to the councilman uh, protesting against the erection of a merry-go-round on the lot owned by the city on the east side of Fillmore Avenue, south of Broadway, which was purchased for a police station. So apparently they uh, granted the permit, but they, um, this uh, Dr. Fosnack says the, the merry-go-round would cause too much noise and other nuisances menacing the public health. So apparently this, this was actually a pretty common problem. Um, people would uh, put a carousel up and not everybody was happy about it. Usually it was the music. Sometimes they felt that it would uh, attract what they thought were undesirables, which mostly was just people, um, I would see more people that might cause problems at the carousels. Um, so this, this protest is, is something actually fairly common in the early 1900s and a little earlier. Is not everybody was very accepting. The, 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 the thing was back then they would, uh, people would move the carousels around. These, well, these were carousels that um, somebody would uh, try in different locations, see if they could make some money. Um, if it didn't do well at one location, they move it around. Um, most, a lot of these carousels really um, moved around. And I actually wrote a book, it's called Murder at the Carousel. And believe it or not, there are actually a lot of weird instances at carousels. Uh, you wouldn't think that you, you see carousels today, you wouldn't think that they were a trouble spot. Um, but this one I found from 1917 in Buffalo too. Um, the boy was shot in back, one held. And apparently the 16 year old, I, I'm gonna just paraphrase it. You can, can read it yourself too, but um, a 16 year old was uh, shot in the back while riding on a merry-go-round um, in Buffalo. And it was a 22 caliber bullet, bullet that was removed. Um, and apparently they arrested a 17 year old and uh, uh, he was charged with assault, but he, um, he did claim he fired the shot. And he said that he uh, actually was trying to shoot somebody else that slapped him in the face and this guy got in the way. No, I like it's. I laugh a little because you just don't think of carousels as being this um, uh, such a uh, problem place to be, uh, but they sometimes did attract a little bit of rowdy crowds. Some people um, just, you know, they <laughs> they wanted to cause trouble. So here's this person. It sounded like he, he was hurt, but luckily he was okay. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite carousels. And um, I like to share it because I, I was very, very lucky to get this postcard. It's Ontario Beach Park's carousel. And um, Ontario Beach Park still has a carousel. It's, it's a carousel that's been in its original location since 1905. And this is an early picture. Uh, what's really cool about this picture is it shows the horsehair tails on the horses. It also shows, you can see the, um, the reins and the stirrups. Um, now the carousel today, the uh, front row does not have horsehair tails. They have wooden tails that replace them and it doesn't have the reins or the stirrups. And you can see sort of guessing a little bit at the um, original color of, obviously this is a black and white picture, but you can see it kind of had a little bit of a dappling um, on this horse. So it, it really gives you a little bit of clue what it was back then. I would say my guess I um, would be this uh, was pretty close to when this carousel first came in 1905, and I just seeing the the people all dressed up and and the the carousel with um, just more original with the tails and everything. Um, this is really a unique picture to me, and really um, I love having this picture and sharing it because 
this is one of my favorite carousels and I grew up with this carousel. So um, it's something that I'm proud of. But um, so this is a, the carousel in a Terry Beach Park in Monroe County, New York, and it's still there today. So you can ride it. It only costs a dollar. Um, my my yeah. best job ever was uh, this summer. I, I spent uh, several weekends um, operating the carousel at uh, Ontario Beach Park. And it uh, was really quite something. You get little kids with eyes all big, um, first time they've ever gone up on the horse. And then you had 80 year old people coming in saying how they remember it when they were young. And uh, what what did they ever do with the brass ring? And I, they um, used to you know grab it. I'm thinking probably the insurance companies told you to. Yeah, most of the uh, most of the brass ring machine or the ring machines were um, removed because of insurances. Um, the problem was, um, I think um, there were some injuries because of the brass ring machine. Um, so a lot of them, a lot of the carousels just removed them. I, I'm, I can't exactly off the top of my head remember when they took off the um, ring machine. I know Seabreeze, I think, lost theirs in 1972. So I would assume that it was around that same period of time. But there were um, there were injuries on the carousels. People, um, you know, even today, people are sometimes a little bit too too happy. They they um, fall off because they're trying to get the ring, and then it's you know, it's um, you know, it's they sue. So um, the insurance, um, what happened for a while there is the insurance rates went so high that they, um, you know, a lot of carousels just removed it. It was just a lot less work to, you know, dealing with insurance companies. But that, that is my favorite carousel, so I, I do love talking about it. I, I researched this carousel a little bit, um, though I never really found a good picture of it. Um, it's a, a merry-go-round or carousel at uh, Recreation Park, which is in Fulton, New York, um, in Oswego County. Now, um, th there was actually a lot of work trying to get a carousel at this location. Um, I believe it was a mayor who, um, he, there, uh, there were carousels there before, but um, they, um, they actually worked to get a Herschel Spillman uh, carousel there in 1922. But this, this park actually, what's really sad is that this park, I think, la um, lasted until about like 1930. So the carousel didn't really stay that, there that long. Um, but what I really find neat about postcards is they, um, they help preserve the past because I, I have a couple postcards of this uh, uh, area, which um, you can see there's different ones that shows the building, which is really a pretty building. Um, what's really neat is a lot of these, um, a lot of the carousels that were um, at a park location had a nice building to protect it. And this is uh, the last picture I have is this is a, a, the one on the left is a postcard. The other one is actually from a newspaper. And um, what happened was after the carousel left, they still kept the building for a while there and they used it for different events. Uh, but in 1949, there was a fire and it, it caused enough damage um, that I, I think they probably could have saved it, but they decided to tear it down. Um, and really what's sad is that we, uh, when you do research uh, on carousels, you realize how many carousels are gone and how really too, that most people don't even know about these carousels. It was, this roundhouse was gone in 1949. So this, it's, it's, been quite a long time since this uh, roundhouse or or any memory of this carousel is you know has been in anyone's head so it's it's kind of sad to lose you know these carousels and the beautiful roundhouses they had now uh, one thing I tried to do with um, this presentation was try to find uh, a little representative of all the areas which is actually hard to do because there's there's actually all different carousels and then it get, can get a little overwhelming. Uh, Binghamton has, has has six carousels, and I I'm not going to dwell too much on it just because there's six carousels that that could be a whole presentation alone. Um, but um, this postcard shows Ideal Park, which is also known as and Joey Park, and this carousel is one of the ones that. Uh, George Johnson, um, he um, donated six carousels to uh, the Broome County area. And um, this was one that actually moved uh, once more in 1967 to Highland Park in Enwell. So um, this is actually a nice postcard showing the, the carousel. It doesn't really show uh, that much the horses, but um, they are all um, um, Herschel carousels and beautiful ones that are preserved and all, all six are operating today. But um, I like this postcard. Just shows a little bit of, you know, that that's the the time frame is neat. This this postcard is from I think 
around 1920. Um, the, the postmark on it, I believe, is either 1920 or 1921. So it just shows that time period. And, and these carousels were, were really loved by um, the people. And, you know, they had such a respect for jo George Johnson for um, donating all these carousels to the, um, the area. Bill, did you have a question? Yes, I, my yeah. question is, in your research, is there a relationship between, say, the the uh, with carousels and their importance to say county fairs, both in terms of carousels that were port that were traveling, so to speak, and those that became more permanent sites? Did you find any relationship between the carousels in relationship to, like, say, the annual county fairs? Well, what's interesting is that um, some carousels were at parks, but then after, um, see, what um, back in the, I would say, 1890s, 1900s, the county fairs were, were usually around harvest time, so they'd be in September. So what's interesting is some of these that were actually at parks would actually um, do a, a county fair circuit after the parks close. So say the park closed in September, they would actually do a circuit. So it's, um, when you ask if there's a relation between the, the um, them, it's, uh, I would say that a lot of carousels were made more to travel. Um, so those were the ones that usually did the county fairs, but there were some nicer carousels too that also went to the county fairs. Um, they, what they would do is the counties, um, the county fair people would look for a carousel to come to the fair. And there was usually some kind of um, um, arrangement made. So um, some of these um, carousels, they had their circuit. Um, and this was even before really the amusement companies. Um, you know, nowadays we have mostly amusement companies that just do carnivals. But some of these were, um, some of the early county fairs had like, um, there were people that they owned a carousel and they had this arrangement. They, they might be at the, they might have a, um, a, like a routine during the summer, but in like September, October, they would do the county fairs. Um, that's that sort of changed a little bit in the recent years because it's it's not the same because they're um, they're mostly um, amusement companies that do the county fairs, um, and but most of the carousels at county fairs would be ones that were really meant to travel, which would be simpler carousels that are a little easier to set up um, rather than the more ornate ones. I hope that helps. <laughs> yes, it does. Thank you. Appreciate. It. Oh, thank you. And it's it's a good question because for one thing, yeah, um, it always amazes me how many carousel companies were actually running in the eighteen I started, 1890s was really when it started um, getting big. The carousels, 1890s, 1900s, even into the early 1920s, um, there were a lot of different carousel companies, and some of them were really small. There were a lot in New York. Um, there was like a company in Lockport. There was North Tonawanda. There were different, like really small companies as well. And they were all trying, to, they were all selling their carousels. So in, we're not even mentioning the ones that were handmade by people because some people actually made their own. So there were lots of carousels out there. This was a market that um, people found it. I mean, it was a way to make money. This was capitalism and, and a way, you know, people that were just everyday people um, finding a kind of a way to take an adventure and also make some money. The last carousel was Kingston Point Park. Um, Kingston Point Park had um, had a carousel which was um, was a, um, a lesser known carver, and um, this one here too, which is um, Canada um, Canada Rago, and I, I can't always pronounce some of our New York names here, but um, this was actually uh, it started with a track machine, and it then later had a, um, a buck carousel, and the buck carousels were interesting because. He did. He sold some, I think, to um, traveling carnivals. Uh, they were actually really nice carousels, and and as um, people as people try to learn more about carousels, I think we're um, together and with the internet, we we actually um, there's a lot of people learning more about the the different makers. There's carousel makers that we're still learning about, um, and the track machines like this one pictured here. Um, there, there were so many, tra this was a time when uh, the track machines were carousels um, that didn't go up and down. 
they went in a circle, but they didn't go up and down and they didn't have the upper, um, the sweeps and everything. So you could see it was just went around in a circle, um, but they had a different, lot of different manufacturers for them too. This was a market and there were lots of carousels and this was a thing, um, a lot of parks had carousels. So, um, but this carousel was an early carousel at this park in Richfield Springs. And they later had another one, uh, which um, I'm not sure when their last carousel stopped operating. I've seen some pictures in the au like auctions where it showed the carousel animals. But um, um, the sad thing is, is uh, there's so many carousels that are lost through auctions and sold. Um, a lot of these um, people, they were competing against um, other people because this was a market. Everybody wanted to ride a carousel. Everyone, had, it was very popular. So <laughs> there were lots of carousels out in New York. And it's kind of interesting whether they were at a park or at a county fair. Um, there's just so much history. I guess my a follow up question would be then yeah. when you're talking about market, you know, talking about it as a business, would that then be related also to the popularity of Coney Island Definitely. in New York City? And at that time, the presence of railroads as a dominant transportation vehicle and probably more, more railroad track and mileage available in a state like New York than we'd have, say, today. In other words, it was easier to get around by rail and you could ship more easily by rail. Railroads were a big uh, factor, definitely. For one thing, uh, a lot of railroads wanted a destination to take their people to. So they helped create some of these parks. Um, some of them were really actually small amusement parks, but um, they were created by railroads. They, they were funded by railroads. So um, a lot of these parks um, were part of the railroad. They were, um, so they were and Coney Island too was a, a big factor because uh, a lot of people obviously didn't live all near Coney Island, but they heard of it. So there were kind of terms like, for example, people would um, call an amusement park like the Coney Island of Western New York or the Coney Island of Central New York. That was their term. It was their, their little way of advertising. We're kind of like Coney Island. Um, and there were several amusement parks that tried to steal a little bit of the Coney Island's thunder just to, to get attention. But yes, the railroads were a big factor because people could get around more. I mean, um, they and they wanted that the, they would consider that the railroad would take them somewhere. And also they made these areas into resorts. A lot of these carousels were um, near the water. They picked like, like, it wasn't, you know, being New York, it was more lakeside resorts like Ontario. Lake Ontario was a resort area. You know, any area along the lake, any lake was, was a considered a resort area and the railroads would take you there. So definitely this, this helps spurn the, the carousel movement and all amusements, you know, you, you, sometimes it wasn't just a carousel there, it would be a few little other rides and, and it was enough to draw people to um, the park. So it was, it was a big thing. So I hope that helps. <laughs> it did, thank you. Thank you for questions, I, I, I appreciate it. Now this carousel, it, it, I like this picture because it's a little closer up and you can see this. This is a, another, um, uh, this is another track carousel and it's one of the early ones. Uh, it's, it's nice to see a postcard image showing it. And this, um, this is a, um, at Ballston Lake, which um, this is, because uh, um, I'm screen sharing, I can't read all of what I wrote on here, but it's a, it was an early carousel um, at the location and they later got a, um, what was listed as a Mangles Ilion's carousel. So they got a nicer carousel, which was um, with, they could go up and down. So uh, a lot of the carousels, because uh, the first carousels really made were mostly uh, the track carousels. And this was before all the mechanisms that could, you know, for the carousels can go up and down and the sweeps and everything. Um, this, this was the earlier carousels um, and they were obviously very uh, popular in the area. Uh, this is uh, Westfield, New York, which, which is in Chautauqua County. Um, and you can see it's another track carousel. And uh, I have a story which is on the next page about it, but it's a kind of an interesting story. Um, and you can see there's some of these, um, you know, these were the uh, very popular um, rides. And um, I'm not sure if, what else was in this uh, location. I tried to research every carousel that I have a picture of, but sometimes you just don't find a lot about these carousels or, or the location alone. And it may just be that it operated for a little while at this location. 
one thing that, that um, was a, a, a very tragic situation, but it was part of the carousels was they had the steam engines and the steam engines um, were dangerous. The, the, they basically, from what I understand, they, they had the, they used the coal and the water. And um, they also had these belts that would run from the steam engine to the carousel. And a lot of people got injured. They, um, they tried to uh, guard the, the belts because these were moving pieces and everything. And this, this is what made the carousels go around. They would try to have somebody guard them, but um, people would get injured this way. And so you could see this was in 1899 at Westfield, which was that last carousel. And so a six-year-old uh, was caught in the cable belt and drawn into a pulley that was running the merry-go-round. And it actually says here it was the, car the carousel had been there two weeks and he um, was so pretty badly injured. Um, and they said that they were looking at him, but they were, they apparently just, when it happened, they just, they, they're paralyzed. They just, you know, couldn't get into action. But sadly, um, the child took hold of the cable. He just um, didn't realize, well, you know, he probably just saw it and just wasn't even thinking. But sadly, this this was actually something that happened quite a bit. Unfortunately, um, I've seen other articles. Um, steam engines were, you know, something that it was part of the carousel because you had to have something to power it. But uh, when electric came about and it was uh, became more popular and easily easy to use, um, most carousels went to electric. And that they their stories that they would leave actually their uh, steam engines, wherever they, you know, if they were traveling, they would just leave their steam engine um, at the last location they were. They just left them behind because um, electric was so much easier to use. And also they had to have people run the steam engine. So this wasn't just, um, this was actually an extra job just to run the steam engine and somebody to run the carousel. And this is Edgewater Carousel in uh, Grand Island um, in Erie County. Um, there's actually been, um, we we're talking about resorts and there's actually, I think been a, um, there were several resorts in Grand Island um, area because it was an area near water and, you know, nice, nice location to, to come visit. And I have a, I believe I have a, um, I think I wrote the story on the side here, but so there was um, somebody that uh, he was running an orphan's picnic and so one of the kids started the carousel. He was actually um, doing something with the gears and he, he lost a thumb and um, it's, you know, you get these stories and I think too, people, um, people would actually be working on these carousels while the ride was running sometimes. So they took some extra liberties that didn't, they sometimes would get hurt. Um, but I, I read this one story where the guy was actually working on the carousel, trying to fix something and they were, they keep the carousel spinning because it made the money so they, they didn't even like uh stop the, they wouldn't always stop the carousel while it was running but in this case it was just an accident here but um uh sometimes these stories are really all that's really left of um of the carousel like so you might not get a picture and then you get a little random story about something that happened with the carousel and it gives you a little bit of feel for the carousel whether it's a sad story or a happy story it's it's um a way to actually just kind of realize this carousel was here. And this is actually another picture of that same um, um, amusement area in Grand Island. And you can see the carousels on the left by the tent and they had a Ferris wheel and looked like they have different activities. So a lot of these carousels, some of the carousels were just carousels. There wasn't anything else um, near them. And some of them were part of either amusement, amusement area, amusement park or a car, you know, like a, a carnival or county fair. Um, so a lot of these carousels, the location really varied. Um, a lot of times too, they would just set the carousel up on a, on a corner lot that was unoccupied. So you never knew where you'd find a carousel. This is a forest park um, in Utica in Mohawk County. And um, I never really found a whole lot about the Utica. I believe they had more than one carousel, but it's actually a very pretty building. Um, sometimes uh, researching, even with uh, uh, having internet and having so much online uh, is a, a good thing, but sometimes you still can't find a lot. A lot of these carousels, they, they were sort of ended up being forgotten and all that's left really is, uh, you know, the random picture of these carousels, but you could see how pretty this um, roundhouse was and, and it probably was a very nice carousel inside it. Um, and there was mention of Coney Island 
it's hard to really um, do a whole lot of Coney Island because there were a lot of carousels. Um, there were so many carousels there and they had a lot of, um, a lot of really nice ones. Um, this one was actually, um, the Brighton Beach Carousel was one of many in the Coney Island area. And they actually um, dismantled this carousel building and they put in storage in trailers. And I guess the idea was that someday they might be able to um, put the building back together. But uh, from what I heard years ago was, was that they really, no, nobody really expected it was gonna happen. They sort of did that, but um, whatever happened to the building parts, it's probably still in trailers today. But it's a pretty building. And a lot of these, some of these roundhouses were actually um, built by the companies that built the carousels. And some of them were just actually built by the, um, the person that owned the carousel. But you can see that some people put a lot of money into their buildings. And this is a uh, electric park, which is uh, Columbia County. And I believe it was uh, actually kind of near Albany, New York. And um, this park closed in 1920. Um, it's kind of, um, there's uh, been a lot of different parks and some just either made it and some didn't. Um, this park, um, I believe it was, it, it was actually on the railway. So it was a destination for the railway, but th there got to be a point, I think, where there was so much competition and I think some parks just closed because they just weren't making the money that other parks were. But you can see it was actually a very pretty carousel. And uh, um, I've tried to research this one. I just can't seem to find out exactly what happened to it. And like um, so many carousels, um, when you read the newspaper articles, they don't always talk about what happened to the carousel. Um, they might talk about the park closing, but the carousel sort of gets left behind in the news. Um, now, one big... Um, way to lose a carousel is fire. Uh, I'm putting these, these are actually newspaper articles, but I thought it's shared because um, there's been so many fires um, of carousels. And the problem is these are wooden um, machines, just about everything's wood. And uh, when the carousel is, um, you know, when flames start um, going after a carousel, it's usually um, gonna lose out. Um, uh, this picture shows um, Seneca Park, which was, in Rochester, New York. And the park, um, there's a zoo there, but this was actually separate from the zoo. And the carousel was run, run by the long, um, it was a long carousel, which uh, was um, started out. Seabreeze ha had the long family that ran um, carousels there. And this was one of their carousels. But um, it was sad, they, they lost their carousel in 1948. And they, the owner just decided he didn't wanna, he didn't wanna go back to, into the carousel business. Uh, it was just way too much of a loss to him. And this actually, this fire actually happened during the day, um, but it was in a weird location. That it was just a little bit harder to fight because um, they were in a park and um, sadly they, they lost this carousel. This one is actually um, Prospect Park. And I, I sadly, uh, there's actually a, a several fires that I, I know of in New York. And this was in 1932. Um, I, I actually researched Prospect Park because I, I I like the New York City car carousels. And um, I came across this picture. So it's it's interesting to see the, the picture, which um, it was a total loss. You can see the, 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 the pole they're sticking out is the center pole, which is usually pretty big and pretty heavy and it was made of metal. Um, and this carousel was later replaced by another carousel. Um, so some, some people would um, replace their carousels and others won't want it. It just depended on, you know, I think a lot of it just depended on the money or, or if they really wanted to go back in the carousel business after such a big fire. Now, Genesee Valley Park was actually um, one of my favorites to research. It was in Rochester, New York. And what's interesting um, to that is there were actually many carousels there. And they had one that was lost in, I think it was 1895. And that was lost to lightning struck the carousel and burned it down. Well, this was 1953 and it was a fire so Rochester, New, Rochester, New York area had actually several, several fires and you know, it's, they lost their, their carousel, uh, everything burned down, but they actually decided to rebuild. Um, this was um, in a um, county park, um, just like Ontario Beach Park. Uh, county parks were actually pretty popular for carousels um, and they usually didn't have that many other amusements. Usually it was just the carousels. So um, this was a sad loss, but they did um, rebuild um, they had people, they um, decided to rebuild it and they got a carousel from a Cushnet Park, which was in New Bedford, Massachusetts. 
And so this carousel uh, came to New York and spun there. It uh, later went to Atlanta, Georgia, and then all the animals were um, removed off the carousel and the frame ended up in Chattanooga where it uh, has new um, carousel animals on it. Um, but it's kind of neat to see that this is actually a picture of them building the, um, you know, a new building for the carousel. And um, this picture is not a postcard, but um, I just thought it was, it's neat to share the picture of a uh, building going up for a carousel. Now there's, um, I talk a lot about the old carousels, but um, the newer generation of carousels is, is interesting to speak of. First of all, a lot of carousels today are, are a mix of, of uh, materials. You, there's still aluminum carousels being made. There's also uh, wooden carousels being made. And there's also fiberglass. So you get a mix of materials. The fiberglass is a, uh, obviously a new mat material. Aluminum's been around since probably the 1930s, 1940s. And um, so you've got a mix now. The first carousels were all wood. So now we have a mix of, of animals, what, what they're made of. And this carousel um, was, I, I think it was um, a half and half, which was half wood and half aluminum. It was a Olympic Park carousel, which was on Scottsville Road in Rochester, New York. And it was part of an amusement area. But what happened with them is um, they had a, a very good um, person who, who um, really loved the amusement industry and he, he was good at it, but um, he was getting competition from Darien Lake, which um, was in what well, west of New York, or west of Rochester, New York, but um, it was a newer amusement park with bigger rides. And there's always competition no matter where you go. And um, Olympic Park just gonna keep up. Um, but what made it worse was um, the owner died um, and they just struggled after that to really keep their uh, carousel go and their, their amusement park going. So they did sell it. And uh, what happened was um, I believe the uh, frame of it might've been sold separately, but the, I know the animals were sold off separately and they ended up in an auction where they all um, went everywhere. So. Uh, this is one of the picture postcards. I had actually gotten a whole selection of um, Olympic Park postcards one year um, on eBay, and I was able to get a picture of this carousel because uh, it's weird because sometimes these carousels, even the newer ones, you can't always find a real picture of it. And, and um, I, I was just very happy to find this picture of the carousel um, on a postcard showing it. Um, it's an Ellen Herschel, which is all, they're all made in North Tonawanda. And uh, this is Catskill Game Farm, which ran from 1951 to 2006. It was Alan Herschel Aluminum. Alan Herschels were, um, were big um, making aluminum after the woods. Uh, the, the big, they started off with the wooden carousels and aluminum was cheaper and faster to make. Um, they went through a, a period in the 50s, especially when the baby boom, where there were a lot, a lot of kids. So they, they were there were a lot of carousels being made even then, and it maybe uh, was a really a time for Poplar um, to make you know carousels popular again. So the Allen Herschels were very popular, and this carousel was sold um, intact in 2006. Uh, it was recently resold, um, so um, it, it was resold uh, intact again. So hopefully, it can start spinning again somewhere. But it's always nice to hear a story where the carousel is actually still working and and um, may you know be spinning again for other people, because it's really um, cool to pass on a carousel to the next generation, uh, to say to your kids, this is a carousel I rode when I was a kid, and this this postcard is cool because it, it shows it. This was a a game farm where they had different animals, so it, was, it looked like a kind of fun place to go, and uh, this is actually the end. Uh, I like to advertise my books, but um, overall, I love I love carousels and I love researching. I um, I research mostly because it's a story. I feel like I I start with a puzzle and I put the pieces together. So sometimes the, the pictures are just part of the the puzzle. And trying to find out where these carousels go is an adventure to me. So I love sharing um, and hopefully you know can. Um, share and keep these um, care cells alive for, the, for other people. But these are just, uh, I like to share my books. If you're interested, you can always feel free to check them up on amazon.com. And um, you can also get them on barnesandnoble.com too. But I, I, um, I research it. My one book is Care Selling New York, which is uh, a little bit of history and tells a story about 
how care cells had kind of evolved over time. And they had their challenges too. Um, also like, for example, during uh, wars, World War I was a hard time for them because they're all their, um, the ones that ran the care cells went uh, to war. So there's, there's interesting stories and um, it's, it's got a whole uh, history of, of really, there's just so much behind the care cells and, and you know, how they um, change over the years. But I want to thank everybody for for um, just coming and to you know listen to me and uh, if there's any questions. I guess I was wrong when I said you wrote fiction. I thought I thought for some reason I thought the murder book was was fiction, but I guess they're all well, they're all nonfiction, huh? That, that's okay because um, a lot of people don't realize. I'm, I'll just I just want to briefly say tell you about the murder of the carousel. It's actually there was a in 1892 there was a a murder at a carousel in Niagara Falls. And uh, this 18 year old was working uh, with his uh, brother. And this was not his brother's carousel, but his brother's in-laws carousel. And uh, there was a little bit of an altercation. And so his, this 18 year old got shot. And I started researching the story because uh, it, there were so many newspaper articles about it because they were trying to catch the who did it. And the father actually became deputized. Uh, so he could, he wasn't trying to, you know, trying to find out who killed his son, but, um, I found out there were other stories, so I actually wrote the book with, um, you know, that the murder in um, Niagara Falls was actually what got me writing that that book because it it just was interesting and um, it was a story in a carousel that nobody you know even thinks about today. You know, in keeping with that book, Murder at the Carousel, there's a wonderful film by Alfred Hitchcock called Strangers on a Train, and the final scene of the film takes place on a carousel. And apparently Alfred Hitchcock was scared stiff of carousels. He was scared stiff of a lot of funny things. But yeah, you, um, you would think if, he wouldn't be. <laughs> I know, but if anyone gets a chance to see it, if you get a chance to see it, it's called Strangers on a Train and it's 1951. And it's with Robert Walker and Fairley Granger. And it's the last scene in the movie, the finale of the film. And uh, it's really spectacularly done. I'll have to check that out. I do. I do like Hitchcock. I, I've never. I haven't seen all of his movies. I, I one of my favorite was actually Rear Window, which my mom, when I was a teen, like I was a young kid, and she introduced me to his movies. Great, great right? film. Yeah. This this one was not as popular, but it was still quite a quite a film. It's called again. It's called Strangers on a Train. I'll check that out. Linda, yes. Do, do you have any extra uh, Detroit carousels? <laughs> Detroit uh, publishing postcards. Um, Detroit ones. Um, I have mostly New York ones. Um, so no, I don't have any of the. the you're asking the Detroit area if there's any. Uh, it's not publishing. the Detroit area. It's the Detroit publishing company. Oh, Detroit. I'm. I'm sorry. I. Um, I'm not sure. If you. Um, I, I don't have my email on here, but I could see if uh, I could look it up and let you know, because I I'm not really sure. Oh, OK. Thank you. Um, I'd, also, I'd also like to ask uh, uh, Al Otterway uh, how many times he wrote his father's merry-go-round. I wrote it many times <laughs> at uh, two different parks. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, I was lucky. I grew up in an amusement park. My uh, parents and my uncle owned Joyland Park here in Wichita for many years. But after they sold it to the Nelson family, Margaret Nelson and her children all gave the their uh, merry-go-round that had been my folks' merry-go-round with my uncle, they gave it to Wichita Botanica. It's all been restored. A new building has been built, and you can still ride the Joyland merry-go-round at Botanica when you come to Wichita year-round, as far as I know. That's, that's enough. <laughs> Thank well, you. That's great. I, I, liked, I like to hear of carousels that are still running. It, it makes me happy. I'm curious about the definition of a carousel. Does it have to have uh, animals on it or can it have uh, other, well, we know there's a seating area, but I 
Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I have a postcard here uh, from France and it's automobiles on a cover that looks like a carousel uh, top. Um, I don't know how to get uh, my picture. Well, I can't, I can't show it if, uh, can you um, see it? I can't see, uh, no, I can't see it, but um, let me start by first of all saying when, um, that merry-go-rounds and carousels are the same thing. Oh my goodness, here we go. Can you see it as I, yes. Yeah. It has the top like a merry-go-round would have, but um, it's, it's chairs or an automobile that will go up and down, uh, not like a carousel horse would, but around a flatbed. And uh, it's a French postcard. They're still dressed to the nines to go out to the amusement park. But is this a carousel or a merry-go-round or just a ride? I would call it more of a ride. Um, uh -huh. Now, some people, you you know, some people would call like um, some of the rides, like for example, an auto. They might call it like an auto merry-go-round or something. But um, when I refer to, I, I really I think of them of uh, the ride like that being a, more of a just a ride, and I think of carousels and merry-go-rounds being ones with um, with horses and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and there is no difference between a merry-go-round and carousel. A lot of people ask that. And, um, a lot of the people that um, they would, the owner of the, um, the owner or the, or the carousel company, they, they had a preference a lot of times, whether they called their, um, their I'm going to call it machine for a minute, whether they call their machine a carousel or merry-go-round. I think some people thought the word carousel just sounded a little fancier, but mm -hmm. um, there's really no difference. And, and newspaper articles uh, use them also interchangeably. Um, I think back in like early years, they called it more merry ground just because that's what the reporters, you know, like to use it, but th there's no difference. But that that ride that you're showing me, it doesn't look like a, I wouldn't really call it a, a carousel. I'd probably just call it a, a ride. And it looks more like, um, um, they had like, they had certain rides, uh, I can't think of a name for it, but um, I've seen rides like that. There are early rides that um, I'm thinking that kind of went around a little bit, but maybe it had a little bit of a, um, a angle or something to it. But it, looks, it looks like it maybe goes like, um, it looks like it goes at an angle, maybe it goes a little up and down. And it might've been early before the, um, um, the traditional roller coasters that might've mm -hmm. been sort of before it, um, they got into the roller coasters. That is a nice postcard though, by the way. <laughs> I <laughs> I just wondered if anybody's seen or been on the uh, carousel in Saranac Lake in the Adirondacks. Oh, I've I've actually been there. Love uh, it. It's, it's so beautiful. beautiful. I think they're all wooden, carved by people in the community. Yes, my my daughter. She's Lake community. Turned, my daughter turned five, and we went there actually last um, in September. So she loves that carousel. She keeps talking about yeah. it. She, I think her favorite is the raccoon. But what's nice is the different animals on it. And I, I really think it's great that um, we have um, carousels that are being uh, carved out of wood again, because there was a time period where um, carousels were mostly aluminum and fiberglass. And, and there's so much art when you carve out of wood, but that's a beautiful carousel. And they're and, all animals that are from the mountains. The from the yeah. Yeah. Yeah, native yeah. to them. Yeah, beautiful. If you haven't been there and you and you happen to be in Saranac Lake, make sure you stop and see it. Yeah, it's, my daughter loves that. She, like I said, she's five. So she loves carousels just like me. So she's always like, she, she'll she ask me, what's your favorite carousel? Hers is the Adirondack carousel. Mm -hmm. uh, I think mine might be Ontario Beach Park just because I grew up with that one. But that's a beautiful carousel. I love the little it's, um, ladybugs that are on each, mm -hmm. each animal too. It's, it's really nice. Our next meeting. Thank you very much, Linda. Thank you. That was very, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Oh, one last thing. Linda, do you want to quickly, you in your other presentation, you talked about the carousel in Rochester that they took away the permit because people were complaining. You want to just say something briefly about that, where it was? Uh, was let's see. Um, there was... It was downtown somewhere in the city. Uh, yep. Hang on. Um, I could probably actually pull it up. Hang on. Let me see if I could pull it up. Because off the top of my head, I, I know the one you're talking about. Um, that was an interesting story. I actually should have shared that one. And was that it. the one in Highland Park? Um, actually, I don't think Highland Park actually had one. 
Um, oh, so this is, um, I, I'm, uh, I'm mentioning this since we was brought up, but um, in May, 8, May 25th, 1898, um, it's an article in Rochester's uh, Democratic Chronicle. It says a merry-go-round must go, and it was located at West Avenue and South Port Street, which was, I believe that would be like in downtown Rochester. It said they'll have to seek new quarters after Monday when the license secured by the proprietors will expire. The machine is licensed by the week and owing to complaints of the noise and disturbance it creates made by residents and businessmen in the neighborhood, Mayor Warner has instructed acting city clerk James not to renew the license. And this was actually one of the few ones I found right in downtown Rochester. Um, so there was 1898. So and like I said, they, um, they would um, set up their carousel in, in like on a street corner. Um, they would get a permit. Um, most of the cities required a permit to operate a carousel, but they, they'd accept it and they run a carousel. But um, also one of the things too, that usually caused the disturbances was the band organ. And there's a lot of complaints. Um, people would complain about the band organ being either too loud or they didn't like the music that they had played. There was, um, you know, people in the 1890s weren't always very happy about carousels, but I, I, I wanna thank um, Michael for bringing that up because it's, I should have actually, um, I forgot to mention that one article and it's kind of interesting because, so here's a carousel 1898 and they um, didn't get their uh, permit um, renewed because people were complaining and um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's just an interesting it, thing. It's some, of, it's some of the health commissioners, I know you mentioned one earlier on, were they worried that the carousels would, uh, I guess you could say, uh, uh, morally or socially overstimulate people? Yes. Um, leaving them was, in, a, in a state of frenzy or whatever? There was, was, this, was this a yeah. concern? There's, uh, there were definitely some concerns about the moral uh, uh, thing with carousels. Now, uh, I know Chicago was actually a big one because they just felt like Chicago, for some reason, um, th there's so many articles about them complaining about the morality of carousels. And uh, uh, the other thing, too, is it, it wasn't just the people, um, because like, like I said, there were actually some, a couple murders at the carousel. And people get a little unruly there. Um, another thing is that sometimes they felt the music wasn't appropriate. There was this, well, there were a couple of music pieces that they just um, felt were inappropriate. There, I think there was one, there was a song, it was about, a, um, it was just like, they considered it inappropriate. It was, a, um, I can't remember the name of the song. It was, it was in Syracuse. They, they had some, um, a lot of complaint. There was a lot of complaining in Syracuse about the music. And um, there, there was definitely a question of morality because they felt that um, um, apparently, I mean, people would gather there and, and it was a way of, um, I think, you know, sometimes you, you've tried to, you know, meet other people there. And so definitely 1890s, 1900s. And my, um, my aunt who since passed on, she said she used to go to um, Seneca Park Carousel in Rochester to um, meet boys and, um, so she was born in, I, was, I think she was born in 19, about 1920. So you think of um, back then, even that she was, she was meeting boys there and her, her parents weren't very happy about that. So there's always a little bit of, um, you know, here's this location that um, people would hang out there. So definitely some morality issues and some complaints. Um, also, uh, which I didn't even bring up as a Sunday um, issue because carousels running on Sunday, you know, there were a lot of there were more Sunday laws back then, and um, it was definitely um, frowned upon if a carousel was operating on a Sunday. And some, some were actually fined for that. And um, there was there's always a little back and forth on that. But um, the carousel operators tended to think um, they were a little bit more um, feeling that Sunday is a, a day that draws people. So. Uh, we want to be open on a Sunday, but then there are, there's other people that would say, why are you open on a Sunday? So there was a little back and forth, and there were definitely some arrests made on and fines because of being open on a Sunday. So there's there was all kinds of little interesting stories about carousels. And you think today it's um, it's the, more of a ride that, you know, like families, and it doesn't seem like um, there's any um, conflicts today. But back then, we we're still sort of exploring in the 1890s and stuff, whether um, this, uh, like having too much fun was actually a bad thing, you know? 
but I uh, hope that helps. But yeah, it's, it's, there's, uh, there's a lot of articles about um, the, the music, the, um, the morality, um, and the Sunday laws, uh, whether, you know, there was, um, it's, it caused some problems for some carousels, especially some of them were, some of them fought back a little, little harder than others. Some of them went with the rules and others said, oh, you know, we're not going to listen to you. You know, <laughs> we're running our carousel. That's interesting. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, everybody, thank for you. being here. We hope we'll see you next next month.